Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to talk about an anti inflammatory diet, what it is, and seven common misconceptions about an anti inflammatory diet. And can an anti inflammatory diet help reduce your chronic pain with fibromyalgia and arthritis and help you lose weight and get healthier as well? All right, so pay attention and listen up close. All right, what's up guys? So like I said, today I'm going to talk about an anti-inflammatory diet, what it is, um, seven common misconceptions about an anti-inflammatory anti diet, and can an anti-inflammatory diet help you really uh, reduce your chronic pain, uh, get you healthier, and lose weight with fibromyalgia and arthritis, all right? Now before I dive in, um, dive in on this topic, be sure and hit that like, share, and subscribe button so you can get notified when I upload more content to this channel, all right? Now, let's go ahead and dive right in. So, what is an anti-inflammatory diet? All right, so an anti-inflammatory diet is essentially any diet in a list of foods that can uh, decrease the inflammation in your body. Like, they basically fight inflammation in your body, decrease it, and help manage your inflammation levels in your body. They keep your inflammation levels down. They prevent you from getting, inf uh, they prevent your body from getting inflamed. So it works for, you know, it's, it's a diet that can prevent inflammation from rising in your body and also decrease inflammation from rising in your body. And there are a list of foods that have anti-inflammatory properties that can help do those things. All right. So that's what an anti-inflammatory diet essentially is. Now, here's seven common misconceptions that, you know, a lot over the years, people have came to me and they asked me. You know, over the years about these, uh, you know, about seven things is it's very popular. It's, it's a lot of uh, questions that I get and it's, it's a lot of the same questions. So what I found over the years is there's seven common misconceptions about an anti-inflammatory diet. So number one, how many different types of and how many different types of anti-inflammatory diets are there? All right. And the response is. The answer is there's two different types of anti-inflammatory diets. And that's where a lot of people can get confused because there's two. And you have the two, the two anti-inflammatory diets that you have are usually Mediterranean and pescatarian type diets. And they're vegan and plant-based type diets. Okay, Both of those diets fall under anti-inflammatory diet category. All right, Because they both contribute to decreasing uh, your inflammation and preventing inflammation from raising in your body all right second is it expensive to eat um, vegan plant-based or pescatarian foods and my answer is is not to be honest with you it's actually cheaper because you know the most expensive things out there that you're buying is like you know your meats your chicken your beef you know pork and things like that but when you're eating anti-inflammatory, when you're eating anti-inflammatory foods, you're actually buying more fresh fruits and vegetables, which are, you know, and, and you're taking those uh, those ingredients of fruits and vegetables, and you're making dishes. You, you're taking individual uh, fruits and vegetables, and you're putting them together, combining them together to make you know main dishes, right? So when you're buying uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, usually those are cheaper than buying. You know a lot of your meat in bulk because that's where the that's where your um that's where the foods and groceries can get expensive so you actually come out cheaper eating especially eating plant-based and vegan foods that would be the cheapest you know the second would be the pescatarian and the mediterranean type diets which are you know basically your plants your fruits vegetables and then adding some seafoods in there that's a little bit more expensive because you're adding you know a little meat in there but you know essentially they're not they're they're actually very cost affordable when it comes to 
you know, buying those type of groceries and those type of foods. The third is, can you still get enough protein, omegas, vitamins, minerals, uh, omegas and vitamins and minerals from your foods without consuming dairy, chicken, turkey, beef, or pork? And this is a very important question because a lot of people think that, you know, you have to have chicken, beef, pork, turkey, and dairy for protein and vitamins and, uh, you know, all your nutrients, but that couldn't be farther from the truth because, you know, your proteins really come in, your pl your complete proteins come in your plants, your fr um, basically your plants, your, fu your fruits and your vegetables. Those are actually more higher in protein than your, uh, than your meats. So that's number one. And especially when it comes to complete proteins, because when you're digesting protein from your meats, like your chicken, beef, pork, and dairy, you know, that animal has already digested and used that protein. So basically you're getting recycled protein that's not as effective as getting the um, getting the inactive protein that's in the plant form, right? So you get more complete proteins and, inact and inactive proteins in the plants that your body can digest and actually use. Um, secondly, vitamins and minerals and trace minerals are actually higher in um, plants, fruits, and vegetables, and it's the same concept. You're getting, uh, you're getting vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals that has not been used, so your body can actually digest and use those nutrients, as opposed to getting it in the dairy, the chicken, beef, and pork. The animal has already used those vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals, so you're getting recycled vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals, minerals that your body can't digest and use as much. You're getting leftovers, right? Your leftover nutrients. So in order to get more vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, proteins, and omegas, you know, you have to go to the source. The source is in the plants and the source is in your fruits, your vegetables, you know, your grains. It's in your plants, all right? Now, uh, another misconception is, are your options limited when going plant-based or vegan or pescatarian? And my answer to that is, no, they're not. You're actually getting, you can actually cook basically pretty much anything that you can make in an unhealthy way, you can make it in a healthier way. So a lot of people think that, you know, when you eat vegan, plant-based or pescatarian, when you eat these type of diets, which are anti-inflammatory diets, that you have to give up a lot of things that you like and you enjoy, but you really don't have to. You know, if you like burgers, guess what? You can eat plant-based burgers. You know, if you like chicken, you can get there's certain combinations of of uh, of tofu that you can use to to make it to give that vegetable. I mean, to give that that I'm trying to think of the word for it to give that to get that chicken, you know, that chicken taste, uh, that chicken feel and that chicken taste with some with some sauce with it. You know, tofu, you can use tofu, you can use mushrooms, you can use beans and things like that. There's different there's different. Um, combinations and 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 meat substitutes that you can use to combine ingredients and get that burger or that that uh chicken taste that you want uh or those tacos you like tacos beef tacos you know you can use plant-based crumbles you can use tofu you can use so many different things that can satisfy that meat uh, craving that you want and that you desire without giving up you know your burgers your tacos you know things like that so you can actually eat a lot of the things that you enjoy, especially, you know, if you like pastries, your cookies, your cakes, uh, you know, you can still get those. You can still eat those and enjoy those as well in a healthier form. They just have to be plant based, gluten free, you know, with no added dairy in it. A lot of those have dairy in it and it's perceived that they're unhealthy for you, but you can eat those desserts, those pastries in a healthier form with gluten that's gluten free and dairy free. And made with plant-based ingredients and still actually get nutrients from those desserts and pastries that you enjoy, right? So your options aren't really that limited. They're not as limited as you think if you was to eat, you know, plant-based foods and pescatarian foods, right? Um, nextly, can an anti-inflammatory diet boost your immune and nervous system? So I spend a lot of time talking about how that how an anti-inflammatory diet can just can decrease your inflammation and a lot of people just focus on that especially with fibromyalgia in the fibromyalgia community a lot of people focus on 
well, fibromyalgia is not, you know, it's not, it's not an inflammatory disease. And they just focus on, well, an anti-inflammatory diet can't help me because my issues are, are in solely inflammation. You know, it's more circulation, more neurological. And so I always have to tell people, you know, with fibromyalgia, an anti-inflammatory diet actually not only does it decrease inflammation, but it's high in nutrients that you need that will help boost your immune system and your nervous system so your um, immune system can get stronger, you know, and your nervous, you can stop having those neurological issues and, and boost your circulation and your nervous system, you know, and that's the primary things that get you healthier with fibromyalgia and arthritis as well. And at the same time, you know, when you have fibromyalgia, you got to be careful because your nervous system is already, you know, damaged as it is and it's weak. But there's also foods that you can eat and beverages that will increase your inflammation in your body and make your pain worse. And that's when you're getting hit with a double dose. So an anti-inflammatory diet takes care of that. It decreases your inflammation, prevents your body from getting inflamed, your muscles and joints from getting inflamed, and it boosts your immune system and your nervous system as well. And I think that's a, a, a huge misconception in the fibromyalgia community that a lot of people aren't putting, you know, two and two together. And that's why I'm here to kind of set the record straight that an anti-inflammatory diet can definitely boost your immune system and your nervous system, which can help ultimately help you manage and overcome those painful symptoms that you experience when it comes to having fibromyalgia and arthritis as well, all right? Uh, let's see what we have on here next. And lastly, um, can you still, oh, I know this, this is another good one I get asked a lot. Can you still eat an anti-inflammatory diet if you have food allergies? And there's different type of food allergies. You know, you can have seafood allergies to shellfish. You can have seafood allergies altogether to a variety of seafood. You can have food allergies when it comes to certain grains, you know, and certain veggies, vegetables, and things like that. And my answer is, guys, you can still eat an anti-inflammatory diet regardless of what food allergies you have. Because, like I told you from the beginning, it consists of a large amount of, it's two primary diets. It's vegan plant based vegan slash plant based and pescatarian or mediterranean whatever depending on where you live is depending on what they call it all right but they're the same it boils down to two different styles of diets and in those two different styles of diets there's such a wide variety of fruits vegetables grains seafoods that you can eat so ultimately you just have to find the the you still have plenty of options that you can eat even if you're allergic to shellfish or grains and things like that, you can still work around that and still have and still eat a healthy anti-inflammatory diet that will help, you know, help you uh, boost your immune system, boost your nervous system, keep your inflammation levels down and provide your body with plenty of healthy nutrients so you can get healthy. All right. And ultimately, the, la the last thing that I'm going to address is can an anti-inflammatory diet um, reduce your chronic pain with fibromyalgia and arthritis? And if you haven't got on, if you haven't caught on to the answer by now, the answer is yes, it definitely can um, in those ways that I just listed below. But it's all about getting the right nutritional balance in your diet. And you have to know what you're doing. You have to get the right balance right across the board and all your vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, antioxidants um, and uh, your proteins and omegas. Right. Now, I did forget to say this. The main reason that an anti-inflammatory diet does decrease your inflammation is because of the antioxidants in it. All right. Those antioxidants in an anti-inflammatory diet is high in antioxidants. That helps detox your body. That is the key thing that helps detox your body and decrease your inflammation level. So I want to I didn't address that at the front end. So I want to make sure you guys understand all the components that are in it. You know, it's high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals omegas, proteins, all your nutrients that you need. So it's definitely good for detoxing and inflammation, uh, keeping your inflammation levels down, boosting your circulation, proteins and omegas to help, you know, um, uh, help you with your muscular strength, you know, to increase your muscle strength, reduce your mu the pain in your muscles, circul uh, the pain in your joints as well. You know, it, an anti-inflammatory diet can, can ultimately just help you 
have a better quality of life with our mountain arthritis. So, I, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, you guys really understand that aspect. It can definitely help relieve your chronic pain as long and it can and you can manage it and keep it down for a, a long period of time. As long as you get the, you know, you get your diet right, you get the nutritional balance right in your diet. All right. That's the main thing. Everything else comes, you know, you want to stretch, you want to, it, it will allow you to stretch more, exercise more, and be more active, you know, and help manage those uh, fibromyalgia and arthritis symptoms so you can have a better quality of life. All right. Now, um, you, it also can help you lose weight as well because, a lot of those foods that are listed, you know, in the anti-inflammatory diet, they're low in calorie. They're not high in calories, you know. So if you want to lose weight, it's a great diet to help you lose weight as well. And ultimately, it's a great diet to help you just get healthier and feel better all around and increase your quality of life, which is ultimately, you know, what you guys want. Right. So hopefully I broke that down for you where it made sense. Comment below if you got any questions. Hopefully I addressed everything. Um, where it made sense to you, right? If you got any questions, comment below. Be sure to respond to the ones that I see. Um, and like I said, hit that like, share, and subscribe button so you can get notified when I upload more content to the channel. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day.